coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Sometimes we would say, is this your night or my night? Because when it's Karen's night, it's different. A lot of talking. <laughs> if there was any sex, it was at the end of a long road. <laughs> or is this going to be my night? Because my night was different than her night. Yay, my night. And... For men, uh, sex is a primary need, and for women, it's a secondary need. Now, some women are more sexual than their husbands. About 30% of women are more sexual than their husbands. But, but here's the point in this. Rarely will our needs and natures match. Rarely in marriage will you have matching libidos. You will sometimes, maybe, maybe when you're younger. But the older you get in marriage, what you realize is it's not... It's not the matching libidos or having the same need at the same time is attitudes. The best sex in marriage is one person serving the other. And again, Hollywood fills our minds with such nonsense that the happily ever after marriage is if you marry your soulmate, you always have the same desire at the same time and everything's always fantastic. No, a lot of good sex is just, you know, one person serving the other. But the man, the woman, whatever it is, it's just serving. Um, another thing about a servant spirit is a servant spirit is the only spirit that can guarantee ultimate sexual fulfillment. N nothing else can. You say chemistry. Chemistry is going to come and go because there's going to be you know, physically good times, physically bad times, hormones, stress, wh whatever it is. Uh, wh whatever else that you're counting on, you can't count on it. But the only thing you can count on is the fact that I will serve you for the rest of my life. My commitment is to serve you. It doesn't matter if I need it. Doesn't matter. It matters that you need it, and I love you, and I will serve you. Um, let me t tell you about the power of a servant spirit. Now, this is Jesus in John 13. Now, the disciples were talking about which one of them was the greatest. <laughs> it's the Last Supper. Jesus is about to die, and the conversation among the disciples was, I, wish, I wonder which one of us is the greatest. And Jesus gets up and gets down, starts washing their feet, and they're totally grossed out by it because they have a worldly view of success and they have a worldly view of authority. In another text, Jesus said, the Gentiles lord over each other, but not so among you because the servant is the greatest of all. The greatest marriage is a servant marriage. is where two people are serving each other in that marriage. And so there's some common fears. You know, sometimes when people uh, begin to serve each other in a marriage relationship, um, they have fears. Now, first of all, servanthood is a superior spirit. Notice what it says here about Jesus. It says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments. Jesus was the most secure person in the room. Jesus knew that he had come from God, that he had gone was going back to God, and God had put all things into his hands. Listen, Insecurity and fear is two of the greatest reasons that people can't serve. Jesus was the most secure person at the table, and he just got up and started washing feet. And all the other guys were having an argument about which one of them was the greatest. You don't have that argument out of a spirit of security. You have that argument out of a spirit of insecurity. A, sp a servant spirit is a greater spirit, and it functions out of security. And a lot of times when People think about serving their spouse. These are the kind of fears that they have. And one is if I serve them, they'll work me to death. This is what I thought about Karen when I wasn't a good husband. And I just thought, you know, if I ever show her any weakness, I mean, she's going to work me to death. You know, if I, just, if I just went up to Karen and said, I'm your servant, just tell me what to do, it would just be the worst day of my entire life. Well, let me, let me say this. So Jesus rebuked the man he was washing his feet. When Jesus got down and started washing Peter's feet, he did not lose his authority. He just chose where he would represent his authority from, the top or the bottom. When I'm serving you, I'm not putting myself under you in a vulnerable position. I've just made a decision. 
I'm going to represent myself from a place of humility, not a place of pride. I'm going to represent myself from a place of security, and not a place of insecurity. Jesus did not lose his authority when he washed feet. He established his authority when he washed feet. This is how we act in this house. This is how we treat each other in this house. And Jesus said, the Gentiles lord over each other. You guys are sitting here talking about which one of you is the greatest. That's a very dangerous thing. Because this is going to end up being a competition where people are going to get hurt. And that's not the way we do things in this house. Jesus said, the greatest among you is the servant of all. Did you know you can go categorically through any business in America and the greatest business in America is the servant of all? Why are they great? Because they serve. Why do we go there? Because they serve. They're great servants. You go in there, you know you're going to get great service. It's the truth. The greatest is the servant of all. The greatest spouse is the servant of their spouse. And the greatest marriages in the world are two servants in love. The worst marriages in the world are two selfish people in love. And so if I serve them, they'll work me to death. No. I don't lose my authority. I'm not, I'm not going to subject myself to abuse just because I'm going to serve you. I don't lose my equality just because I'm going to serve you. You know, I can disagree with you as I'm serving you. But I'm going to do this by faith because it's the right thing. Here's another thing about servanthood. Servants, because of their spirit and the way they think, have a built-in sensitivity to the needs of others. Um, Jesus was the only one at the table at the Last Supper thinking about others. Every other man at the Last Supper was thinking about himself. And Jesus got up and began to wash their feet while they were oblivious to the needs of other people. Our God is a servant. That is the nature of our God. Now let me say this. He ever lives to make intercession for us, and no one is as sensitive to you as God. Our God loves to serve his family. Our God loves to love his children. He loves being a daddy. He loves loving us. And when we pray, we never get a recording. He's not distracted. When we pray, he's listening to every single syllable. And Jesus says he knows everything that you're going to pray before you pray it, and he cares. Don't you love that? Yes. Doesn't it make you secure in a relationship knowing that I've got such a loving, serving, merciful, generous God, and he doesn't just want to meet my needs. He wants to meet my desires. I don't want to meet Karen's needs. I want to meet her needs and desires. I want to be your dream maker. I want to help to bring you to your full potential in God. And I want to make every desire of your life that is a righteous desire. I want, I want to be God's partner to help that come true. And when you have two people in love that are both serving each other and trying to meet the needs and desires of the other person, it's, it's not, it's, that's the way God made marriage. That's the way it works, is the servant spirit. Servant spirit, this is another truth about servanthood. Servanthood is the only spirit that experiences true emotional, spiritual, or sexual intimacy. Jesus said to Peter, listen, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. In other words, here's what he's saying to him. If you do not accept this standard, Peter, we can't be in a relationship. Why? Because you can't be intimate with a selfish person. It's impossible. A servant spirit wants to join a servant spirit is sensitive, and it's someone that you can talk to. Have you ever been in a restaurant, and you have a waiter that doesn't want to wait on you? You know, they, they take your order, and then they get on a plane and fly to Europe. And <laughs> Is it my, the most irritating thing on earth to, to try to communicate to someone who doesn't care? That's what Jesus is saying here. Now, Peter, if, if, if you're going to be like the Gentiles wanting somebody to find the Lord over, and you're the boss and everybody's waiting on you, you're not going to have any part with me. But don't you love being in a restaurant and having a waiter or waitress that's attentive? And, and see, here, here's, here's, this, this is one of my little pet peeves. When I say to someone, thank you, and they say, no problem, I hate that. I love it when they say, my pleasure. And they come and fill your water glass or your tea glass, and you say, thank you, my pleasure. I, I like you. 
because you like to serve. And you're not making me feel like a burden. But I don't like it when someone comes and waits on me and I say, thank you. No problem. Oh, I don't care if I'm a problem or not. You know? You can't be intimate with a person who's selfish. A servant spirit is the spirit of a person that you can experience intimacy with. Let me talk just a minute about sex in covenant. Um, a covenant is a permanent sacrificial relationship, and the word covenant means to cut. Someone's going to bleed. And God made Adam, cut him, and made marriage. Every covenant relationship, someone's going to bleed. And in every covenant, there's a covenant seal, and there's a covenant sign. When God is passionate about covenant, and when God makes relationship, He always makes a covenant seal and a covenant sign. The new covenant, Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Well, the covenant seal of the new covenant is water baptism. When we're baptized, we're, we're sealing the deal. It is a public demonstration of a private decision that I've made and the Bible says, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So it's sealing the deal. This is covenant, and I'm being baptized to seal the deal. What's the covenant sign of the new covenant? Communion. Jesus said, as often as you do this, you remember me. And so the, the sign means I remember. The seal means I'm in. I'm in. The sign means I'm acting in good faith. I remember that you died for me. I remember that you bled for me. I remember that you gave your body to remove the curse off my life. And every, every time we take communion, God releases a blessing into our lives. It's so powerful spiritually. God is very passionate about communion. Now, so what's the covenant seal of marriage? Sex. When a married couple gets married, you seal the deal with sex. Sex is the covenant seal of of marriage. What's the covenant sign of marriage? Sex. When you have sex, you're not just pleasing your spouse, you're saying, I remember. I remember that I gave myself to you. I remember that I promised to, to love and cherish you for all the days of our lives. I remember. And I'm not just giving my body to you for you to experience pleasure. I'm giving my body to you to tell you, I remember. And I'm still acting in good faith. And every time you have sex, God releases incredible blessing. Every time we have sex, there are hundreds of chemicals and hormones that are released in our bodies that cause us not only to be healthier, but also cause us to bond to one another and have stronger feelings toward one another and keep us from being attracted outside the relationship. So sex is the covenant seal and the covenant sign of marriage, and it's very, very special and very, very powerful. Let me say this another way, and that is God created sex and God loves it. God loves to see his people enjoying the special uh, creation that he created. You know, God created sex. The devil didn't create sex. God created sex. And he wants us to enjoy sex and marriage together. He wants us, and he made us to where we can enjoy sex in many different ways. That we can be adventurous, in, not in a sinful way, but to be sensual and to give each other pleasure, but to let each other know I'm committed and my body is your body. By the way, 1 Corinthians 7 says when we get married, our body no longer belongs to us, but it belongs to our spouse for the sake of making sure that our needs get met. And that's not a license for abuse. It's a license for use. We never withdraw our bodies. We never use our body as a weapon or a bargaining chip. We never, we never use it to punish or anything. This is your body. And I will serve you with this body for the rest of our married lives. And that's a very, very powerful thing. Let me, let me end this message by talking just kind of to men and women just a minute about the area of sex to make sure that you enjoy it to its fullest. And, and men say, well, I want to serve my wife sexually. Be sensitive to every problem and stress in her life because, again, she's inclusive. You need to understand she's not like you. And if you just think you can jump in bed and after ignoring her all day or being busy or whatever, and you're going to have great sex, it normally will not happen because she needs you to be connected with all of her life all day long. Be sensitive to her different nature. The number one need that your wife has is security. Um, then open and honest communication. 
um, the more you talk to your wife, the more sexual she'll become. And I mean open, patient, honest communication. It's Communication is as important to your wife as sex is to you. And so and I've, I've said, doesn't matter if you want it or not, doesn't matter if you need it or not, you serve your spouse. And here's what I say to men, doesn't matter if you want it or not about communication. Doesn't matter if you want to talk. Doesn't matter if you need to talk. It matters that she needs it. And you talk. And the more you open up and connect to her emotionally, the more sexual she becomes. Uh, she needs non-sexual affection. One of a woman's biggest needs is non-sexual affection and leadership. She wants to be respected as an equal, but she wants you to initiate the well-being of the home. Be romantic in, in her language. But let me say something about romance. When you send your wife flowers and cards and you're romantic, it says this to her. You're on my heart. And I think about you when I'm not with you. And I desire you. Romance is the language of desire. When you're not romantic, it means this. I don't think about you when I'm not with you. You're not on my heart. And you're kind of a burden. And that's what women take from that. So romance outside the bedroom of pursuing your wife and being romantic to her is very, very important. Let me talk to women for just a minute. Communicate to your husband that you accept his different sexual nature as valid as God-given. Most men are more sexual than their wives. And some women reject that or they make fun of it. Uh, they, they won't validate it. But understand this. God gave men the desire for sex to keep them coming back to their wives. It's a magnet. God gave women the gift of sex and God gave men the need for sex. So when your husband keeps coming back to you, that's a good thing. And when you satisfy him, let me say this to, to women, your husband will always be most emotionally vulnerable when he's having fun with you and after sex. You say, my husband's so closed off. He won't talk. He just, you know, whatever. Have fun with him and have sex. And he'll open up to you. That's, that's, that's just how we're wired. Uh, be creative and energetic in meeting his sexual needs and desires. One of the things that Karen and I used to do is, and this is another thing I was going to say, in being organized, you can plan sex. Uh, Karen and I used to, our, our language was being together, you know, when our kids were growing up. And we would say, we're going to be together Tuesday night. Well, that meant sex. That meant Tuesday night is sex night. And uh, so, and we, we planned accordingly. You know, we, uh, I wanted her to rest all day and, you know, and, and <laughs> I love watch y'all being nervous. I love it. It's just kind of a cruel thing. But, but here's what we did. Sometimes we would say, is this your night or my night? Because when it's Karen's night, it's different. A lot of talking. If there was any sex, it was at the end of a long road. Or is this going to be my night? Because my night was different than her night. Yay, my night. And... But, but here's the point. We, we both were satisfied. It wasn't all her way or all my way, but you, we planned it. And, you know, you, you can organize. You, you can be planned about that. But, but be creative. And it doesn't mean that, you know, you just always have to be just doing something new and all that stuff, but it means there's an attitude there that just says you're not a burden. This is not something I have to do. In other words, your husband says, well, thank you for sex. No problem. <laughs> I'm not... Call me if, he, if she does that. Okay. <laughs> My pleasure. I love to serve you. It changes everything. Well, I hope you enjoyed that teaching. This is from a seminar that I do called Our Secret Paradise. It's a six-part seminar series with a lot of really great information to bless you in the area of your marriage. And we want to put these resources into your hands right now for your gift of any amount to support us here at Marriage Today. Now, we're a ministry and a mission, and we hope that you've been blessed by marriage today, but we go all over the world helping people to succeed in marriage, helping problem, helping people to heal from bad marriages, also helping families to stay together and little kids staying together with their parents. So when you give here to Marriage Today, I hope it blesses you, the resources that you get. But understand you're blessing a lot of people. Right now, for your gift of any amount, we're going to send you the CD single, The Secret of Building a Lasting Marriage. It's a great teaching, and you can either have it on CD or an MP3 audio download. It's your choice with your gift of any amount, and the information is there on your screen of how you can get it. Also, with your gift right now of $55 or more, 
we'll send you the full six-part CD series, Our Secret Paradise, with the book, Our Secret Paradise. For your gift right now of $90 or more, we'll send you the full DVD series along with the book, Our Secret Paradise. This is great information. It can save your marriage. Uh, it can take your marriage from being okay to good or good to great. It can also change your family for generations. Honestly, it, it can. It's worth the investment. We hope that you'll get this resource as you give to the ministry here. You're blessing us. We want to bless you back with these resources. Here's how you can get them. Discover the keys to a satisfying and passionate marriage with the series, Our Secret Paradise. For your gift of $55 or more, you'll receive the CD series and book. For your gift of $90 or more, you'll receive the DVD series and book. In this series, Jimmy will show you the foundations for establishing peace and intimacy, keys to becoming your spouse's best friend, and how to defeat the real enemy of your marriage so that you can have a secure, satisfying, and passionate marriage the way God intended. We're building something great. We've got to count the cost because it's going to take us every single thing we have, and this is going to be challenging. The other side of that thing is we're going to succeed, and it's going to be the most awesome thing we've ever done in our lives. For your online gift of any amount right now, we'll send you the teaching, The Secret of Building a Lasting Marriage, available as an MP3 audio download or CD single. You can have a marriage that lasts happily ever after. Create your own secret paradise today. I hope that you've been encouraged by today's program. You know, this, this program today, it comes from our, our Secret Paradise seminar, but it's called The Secret of Ultimate Sexual Fulfillment. You know, now this, this is what our world is after, is ultimate sexual fulfillment. And, you know, honestly, in the world that we live in, there's so much deception concerning sex that a lot of people believe that sexual, ultimate sexual fulfillment's gonna, you know, be, you know, come from a, a novel or a movie or pornography or, you know, something like that. But it comes from the character of God, that everything that God creates, He creates to operate based on His nature. And God is a servant. God is a servant. Jesus Christ got down, washed the disciples' feet at the Last Supper, that He taught them how to be uh, servants. And when Peter was turned off by that and said, never, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet, Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. And here's, here's the interpretation of that. It is impossible to be intimate with a selfish person. You can't do it. You, you cannot exchange the, the, the soul experience with a person who's only in it for themselves. And so when you have a person or a couple in marriage and one of or both are selfish, intimacy's out the window. But when you have two people who are willing to serve each other and they get in bed and, they're, and sexually, their number one goal is to please their spouse. And you see, we're at, we're at each other's mercy. We, we can't meet our own sex needs. If we could, we wouldn't get married. But when you have sex with someone and their goal is to please you and to meet your needs and desires, th those that are righteous, those that can be met, I'm saying the end result is two very fulfilled individuals. That's how God made marriage, is two servants in love, two people serving each other. And when you serve your spouse, and see, you may be saying right now, well, I do it, but my spouse won't. You be the first to go. The best person does the right thing first. The Redeemer always goes first. And, and, and you put yourself out there and you serve your spouse. And you say, well, they'll take advantage of me. Well, don't let them take, don't let them take advantage of you, but serve them. And serve them by faith. Serve them with an attitude that says, you know something? I'm doing this and I'm praying that God will use my love in their life to soften their heart and to turn their heart back toward me. But when you do the right thing, God will honor you. And when you do the right thing, it changes your marriage. When you change, your marriage changes. And I hope that this helps you. Big area that's an important area in people's lives and marriage, but it works when we have the character of God in our lives and we serve each other. Now, you know, part of the mission in ministry of marriage today is we love going all over the world and helping people, like in the area of sex and finances and communication and all the different areas of marriage. We have about a dozen seminars that, that I teach on. We have over 100 resources uh, marriage building and family building resources. And right now we're broadcast multiple times a day into over 100 million households in North America and in over 200 countries worldwide. And our passion and our vision and mission is to help people succeed in marriage. Marriage is under attack. We all know that. But we are raising a standard, a biblical standard for marriage across America, 
all over the world, helping to build marriages and families, but helping little children to stay together with their parents. And I'll tell you that America can be reborn. America can be restored, one marriage and family at a time. What's happening in America that is so devastating our culture is the destruction of marriage, the destruction of the fabric of society that builds around marriage. When you give to marriage today, you're helping us to take this mission and ministry all around the world. The information is there on your screen. Please stand with us financially. Give your most generous gift right now, and we'll use it to take this message, to bring it back to you, and go all over the world. Thank you for standing with us. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Going through divorce is a lot to ask of children and often results in years of emotional pain. It's a violent ripping apart of their parents and a sense of abandonment. What sometimes we see as a quick way out can mean complete loss for a child. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage. You, you were made for marriage. Marriage Today exists to protect children from the pain of divorce and to steer couples away from marital failure by telling them the truth. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners, and together we can rebuild a legacy of strong families around the world. Choose your level of partnership today and receive immediate access to the video streaming library. Become a rock solid partner today. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Subscribe to Marriage Today's YouTube channel for more marriage building videos and updates.